but you gotta be mm -hmm. careful with it. But it's yeah. okay, sir. This is yours. Thank you, ma'am. This is yours. Oh, thank you very well, much. You're quite welcome. I yeah. never heard anybody thank me for. Oh yeah, yeah, because this is great. <laughs> you know, we, we had anticipated yeah, uh, we receiving this, and we had contacted yeah. the. Um, MPs. Uh, MPs yesterday okay. and also contacted your the office that sure, handles sure. these things coming in as a matter of fact we had uh, uh, contacted them a couple times and we're, we're looking forward to making it easy as far as contacting yeah. who had received oh, was, this so we can go out there sure. you know because you know we know how difficult it is to coordinate yeah. to be able to yeah. come on base yeah. and such like that yeah. so yes yeah we were thank you very go much yeah, thank, thank you, you. Much. okay are you good military yeah well, I'm Colonel thank He's, you for your, you, thank you for your service yeah. thank right. you very much yeah. <laughs> I am the ADA advocate for the Bosgos family in a massive lawsuit against the Veterans Administration. There's clear-cut evidence of conspiracy in violation of 42 U.S. Code 1983 and 5, uh, and I believe also criminal racketeering has occurred. And that's all part of a pattern and practice of the VA to abuse whistleblowers, and everyone knows it. So what happened in this case, you ask? This all started when Robert, a white male, and former JAG attorney was denied overtime work and overtime pay during the Martin Luther King holiday when other black workers were granted the same. Then his wife, Susan, a black female, tried to offer assistance as his ADA advocate. She got stonewalled. Along the way, they learned that the VA has a plan, a pattern, and a practice of releasing private information under HIPAA. They would also come to see the same plan result in the VA falsely accusing them of criminal misconduct in the simple attempt to serve a summons and complaint in federal court against Bonsell James. Now we can clearly see by the video that I'm legally permitted to post, of course, that lead defendant Bonsell James is a complete liar and we can see that she and her husband were actually the aggressors when all the Bosgos family was trying to do was to serve a summons and complaint through their son Lance. The process server stayed right there at the end of the driveway, okay? Then the lawyers got involved, and they were supposed to be helping effectuate service of process, but instead they continued to try to criminalize the whistleblowers, just as they have done to Jamie Foxx and to countless others. Now, I've done my job to keep the Bosgos family in check with regard to their demands. I've also done my job, or uh, <laughs> attempt to do my job, to try to help keep the VA in check with regard to its vituperative largesse and general corruption schemes. Now, at this point, the onus is on the VA to come back with a reasonable counteroffer such that the healing can begin. I know from insiders that Von Sell James is a nervous wreck. Not my fault. I also know that the Bosgos family and their doctor uh, have told me you know that their son Austin is very seriously impacted by all of this he's got to require immediate CAT scans to find out what's going on with him medically okay as you can see by the email there that now all of this is treasonous misconduct in my opinion and if it continues I'll be flying out there in September with a bag full of 4k camera video and microphones and I'm gonna start interviewing past and present VA staff and other people who know what's really going on there now, at that point, the major press and the so-called alternative press are going to have a hard time ignoring this one. And the VA knows it, okay? But what the VA also knows is that it's tearing apart the heart and soul of a beautiful multiracial family with the dedicated careers of service in this country. In this particular case, I even have the medicals to document all of it. Now, the sad part is the VA can't do it alone. It needs help. And it gets help from area judges like... Uh, Judge Zuberry Williams in the criminal court and federal judge Amy Berman Jackson, aka the gatekeepers. Take Zuberry Williams, for example. <laughs> Please take him somewhere off the bench, all right? This man has somehow allowed bogus criminal charges to proceed against the Bosgos family that all arose from this pack of lies that Vonsell James said regarding their son Lance attempting service of process. She said that Susan was in the car and, and carrying weapons. You know, that's like being swatted, okay? Now, it gets complicated, but that's all you really need to know, and it's insane. He's insane. He watched my entire first movie using the footage that the Bosgos family was not allowed to post because of his bullshit order in the first place, all right? But he knows not to mess with Massa too much, 
or he's going to wind up in trouble. So he's going to stay party line and keep doing whatever the VA wants him to do uh, to keep the uh, Bosgos family hemmed up here. Now what the he is saying? Your name is Toby. You're going to learn to say your name. Let me hear you say it. What's your name? Kunta. Kunta Kinte. When the master gives you something, you take it. Then we come to federal judge Amy Berman Jackson. Okay, now she's well connected with big pharma uh, contacts in her financial portfolio history. And when confronted on it, she stated that they were unverified investment accounts and that this information was old and several years ago. Now she never once offered an affidavit to state whether they were accurate or not or what her investment portfolio looks like now or what she did with those investments. Okay, no, she won't do any of that. Okay, she just says, trust me, it's irrelevant. So, hmm, motion recused, denied. Now, she even tried to say that issues with Von Sell James lying about Lance was completely irrelevant when it's not completely irrelevant at all. It's totally irrelevant because this lie and this whole conspiracy occurred relative to the attempted service of process of this federal complaint. So I'm not sure who she's trying to fool, but she won't be fooling me, all right? You know, and then she also pretended to be unaware of the issue as to how these individual defendants were avoiding service. And so even now, the Bosgoss' request to have U.S. Marshals serve summons sits around completely pigeonholed. So I approached their uh, counsel, Matthew Kahn, and I said, hey, man, will you accept service so we can get out of the litigation, you know? Well, not we, I'm not litigating for him, but, you know, I'm inter intermediary. So anyway, um, gosh. Now, I've dealt with another white female federal judge gatekeeper, all right, and on prior occasion, and I've shared this with you before, Langer B. McCafferty. She worked underneath my opposing counsel and in the same position as defendant Kelly Ayotte in my free press lawsuit. Ayotte was a one-term neocon U.S. senator with a horrible track record on consumer protection in New Hampshire. All right, the largest consumer scam in the history of that state occurred on her watch. It was called the FRM Ponzi scam. Just look it up. You can see me right there, though, uh, uh, walking into her Washington office and joining her staff on the, on the matter. Anyway, um, yeah. I know now she knows this is you know, pretty serious business. Sure. When Senator Ayotte was in AG in New Hampshire, while she was there, she happened to have the misfortune of presiding over the largest consumer fraud scam in New Hampshire history. And that involved mortgage-backed securities, and that was the FRM Ponzi scam. Good so, question on the FRM Ponzi scam, uh, the thing that, that went down. Now, given that that was a mortgage-related uh, consumer fraud, and it was the largest in New Hampshire uh, in history, I'm just curious as to why you haven't investigated the fact that someone forced my name to a mortgage, uh, despite the fact that I brought it up to your attention as AG, and I come into well, your office Chris, in Washington if, and here as can well. Can I just say that yeah. if you want something investigated, mm -hmm. Then I think that you should. I'm no longer Attorney General. I am aware of that. I, I came that to your you, office as a senator in Washington and here, and that well, your office staff told me you would contact on, me about the forgery. On individual cases, it's usually the Attorney General of the state, but I'll certainly follow up um, and find out whether we need to connect you with another agency or if that's something that we have jurisdiction to look at. So thank you. Well, as a senator, I think you could do, you could affect that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So anyway, folks. Keep in mind that the VA is chartered with the responsibility of actually taking care of its wounded warriors. Robert Bosgaz, as a plaintiff, was a wounded warrior, and then he eventually had a stroke. Susan Bosgaz, his ADA advocate, also suffers from PTSD. She was actually a paid professional by the VA to educate herself as to the act. All right? as far as the ADA is concerned. So, but this was before they really put two and two together and realized who she is, of course, you know, that's the thing. So, yeah, she was taking care of her husband, injured. She's trying to take care of Lance, emotionally injured. She's trying to take care of Austin, injured. And then there's Robert's brother who died of a stroke, okay? But the VA does not care. It's my job to make them care. This right here, yep, service summons, legal, bro, legal. Legal. These people are at right. our house. Yes. 
doing already a summon. Been served Could papers. you please get out of my face, sir? You're my You've block. already been served. So? Papers. You're Come on, my block. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Listen to your wife, bro. Thank you. Hi. You on my block. These people have harassed us. That's it. 